that are covered and I look at them and I think that's not me, but really it is. But I think, you know, after 34 years of not being covered, um, this is not what defines me, you know, and it never has defined me. But I felt that, I felt very blessed to have three young boys and I felt very privileged and I decided that it was time to own who I was and step up to the plate and deal with those issues. My name is Randa Rafiq and I'm the Clinical and Human Rights Advocacy Coordinator at La Trobe University and I'm the Secretariat for Australian Lawyers for Human Rights and I've been a volunteer at the Whittlesea Community Legal Service for six years. So I'm here approximately three days a week at La Trobe University and my role here at the law school is to create um, clinical programs for students. So. Um, I've only been here for just over a year and in the last six months or so we've created an additional, approximately an additional 100 placements for students. So some of the places that the students are placed is the Asylum Seeker Resource Centre. So the Victorian Government recently provided additional funding for asylum seekers to seek assistance to apply for refuge or asylum in um, Victoria and approximately 30,000 applications will be processed over the next two years. So we're working with the Asylum Seeker Resource Centre and our students to give them um, a practical placement and experience and to broaden their, um, their eyes and their experiences to what is available out there in terms of practising in the law and social justice, not just commercial law or corporate law that they can actually work in the community. I haven't always been covered. I probably chose to cover about four years ago. That was a really difficult decision for me to make because of the discrimination that you can be faced with by, you know, being out, you know, being outwardly, not necessarily Muslim, but being, you know, being a part of a minority. And I think being a Muslim female um, is much more obvious because of the headscarf or the hijab that you wear. So when I had my third child, Zane, I think we were out for lunch and my eldest said to me, Mum, why aren't you covered? Because he saw a young woman who was covered. And I said, oh, I'm a little bit worried about what people might think. And he said, Mum, you shouldn't care what people think. And, you know, I felt very blessed to have three children that were healthy. And I looked at this young child who was obviously wise beyond his years and I thought, oh. <laughs> Yeah, he's right. Maybe I just need to step up to the plate and own who I am. Because I think for a very long time, oh, this is actually a little bit emotional. <laughs> um, yeah, I pretended to be who I wanted to be when I wanted to be. So when I wanted to assimilate and fit in, um, it was really easy to do so. And I think the hard part for me was, you know, after working for so long, was. Yeah, really owning who I was and accepting it and not pretending to be someone that I'm not when it suits me. A month after I was covered, I was walking the children to school and a man started sort of doing this to me and I sort of looked at the side of my arm and thought, is this guy talking to me? Is this, you know, making these, these gestures at me? Yes, he was. Then he started yelling at me and telling me how stupid I was and that I should take it off and all these sorts of things. And, you know, um, in the space of, you know, probably, you know, five seconds, I thought, God, what do I do here? What do I, what example do I set for my children? Do I, do I show them that people can abuse you and get away with it? Um, do I say nothing so that I don't jeopardize their safety or do I actually, you know, say something? And so I actually told him that he had no right to tell me what to do. And, you know, it was across the road and he had a dog that wasn't on leash and he stopped. And this is where I panicked and I had my phone, but I didn't know what to do. So every time something like that happens, I do question it, but after four years, it's like, I don't know that I could go back to not being covered anymore. So it is part of who I am now, and I don't know how I would, you know, go back the other way. So it's a really tricky personal dilemma, and it's a dilemma that I feel that I face more and more regularly um, of late particularly with all the attacks going on around the world that, you know, I feel like every time they say it's a terrorist attack, people, it, you know, that's synonymous with being Muslim. So whether it is or it isn't, that's the first conclusion that people jump to. And I cringe every time it happens because I feel like we're all tainted with the same brush. My son,
son said to me last week, he had an interview for a high school leadership and community um, um, interview for high school and he said, you know, we were talking about what his goals were, if they asked him some questions, you know, what, how does he think he'd respond? And he said to me that um, he's, he wants to be a lawyer because he's inspired by me because he wants to help people. He wants to make a, a difference in the world. And I thought, wow, that makes it all worthwhile. And that was one of the really key reasons why I stuck it out.